morning dear students we will going to be discuss one more problem under assessment of company for uh, uh, competition of taxable income as per normal provision book profit tax liability and tax credit so let's see the problem mr ambition limited is engaged in the business of developing and exporting of computers so they engaged in the exporting of computer business software so the following is a profit and loss account which is given on 31st march 2019 so we have to be see which and all expenses given in the pnl account we have to, whether it is a business expense or non business expense we have to be identifiable so expenses on flop is always they are engaged in the computer business software so it is a business expense salary is a business expense administration expense is a business expense marketing expense is a business expense depreciation on computer we have to be look into uh, adjustment if any adjustment is given on the p and uh, adjustment also depreciation first adjustment their depreciation as per the additional income tax act that means what they are telling uh, trying to telling means whatever the depreciation is mentioned in the p and l account it is not nothing but it is a business expenses only it is a admissible expense so ignore it don't take anywhere so repairs is a business expense provision for income tax is a non business expense so add back to the net profit uh, proposed event it is a non business expense add back to the net profit provision for contingent liability is a non business expense add back to the net profit come to the adjustment so depreciation already explain second adjustment cfe cfe is nothing but currency convertible uh, currency uh, convertible foreign exchange brought into india within a stipulated time so Uh, convertible foreign exchange brought into india within a stipulated time is nothing but obviously they are engaged in the exporting of a business so majority times the exporting activities will going to be taken place through and uh, the dollars or foreign currency so the, what they are uh, telling means foreign uh, convertible foreign exchange brought into in india within a stipulated time is nothing but it is obviously it is a business expenses uh, because uh, uh, stipulated time within the due date they are uh, bringing into india so ignore it don't consider it anywhere brought forward a business exp- expenses they given brought for order business losses and also depreciation as per accounts as per income tax is given as per income tax it will come as a uh, both the amount under step number 1 as per books of accounts uh, uh, books of accounts it will come under step number 2 whichever is less so whichever is less is nothing but we have to be take as a nil amount because with this one is a nil uh, nil amount okay so next one is uh, uh, come to credit side of the pnl account export sales is 60 lakh and uh, sales uh, sales in india is a uh, 16 lakh so both are is considered as a business income long term capital again 3 lakh is a non business exp- uh, non business income we have to be deduct under uh, competition of taxable income under a uh, business uh, business income as uh, at the same time this long term capital again will come under uh, under the format when you are computing the main format it will come as a long term capital again liable for stt why it is come under the long term capital again for liable for stt because uh, so adjustment is given Uh, see your fourth adjustment long term capital gain represents gain on sale of listed shares on the other companies that is nothing but uh, so what do you mean by stt security transaction tax security transaction tax is nothing but any kind of shares listed shares listed mutual funds listed uti if it is shared through uh, uh, sale through an uh, recognized stock exchanges it is considered as an stt security transaction tax so that one only they are saying long term capital gain represents gain on sale of listed shares so listed shares is nothing but they are selling through an recognized stock exchange so it is nothing but it is a long term capital gain liable for stt so as we know that excess of 1 lakh uh, Uh, it is a taxable at a rate of ten percent separately. We have to be compatible. So let's see the problem. Uh, so pro- solution for problem uh, number nine. Uh, step number one is competition of taxable income as per normal provision of fire. I- Uh, IT Act 1961. So uh, there are four rates of income: is an income from house property, income from business and profession, income from short term capital gain not liable for STT, income from other sources. So aggregate of all these rates, you will going to get other gross total income and deduction under Section 80G to 80J J uh, AE. Uh, you will going to get get uh, total other taxable income and had all these five aggregates of income. Long term capital gain is a 20 percent. Long term capital gain uh, liable for STT. Ten percent short term capital gain liable for STT is a fifteen percent casual income is a thirteen percent. So I already explained why it is a uh, we represent separately these items and all. So let's see the problem. Uh, income from house property is anything is given in the income from house property credit side of the PNL account. No information as provided. Write it as nil. Income from business and profession. So we have to be calculate working note one. So that is competition of taxable income as per uh, income uh, from the income from business net profit as per profit and loss account. How much is a net profit? Two lakh ninety five thousand. So write it. Is two lakh ninety five thousand and inadvisable expenses, which are all inadvisable expenses, is there? That is a provision for income tax, proposed dividend, provision for contingent liability. So deduct all these three items, you are going to get eight lakh eighty thousand. So if you subtract, you are going to get thirty lakh seven. Uh, if you add, you are going to get thirty lakh seventy five thousand rupees. And that you have to be deduct. Now uh, any uh, any business expenses is given. Nothing they given in the problem. So any kind of uh, 
non-business non -business income created in penal account is given yes they given one item that is a long term capital gain so long term capital gain you have to be subtractable because it is not related to an income from business set it is other rates of income so that's why it is a non-business income so deduct this amount you're going to get ta uh, taxable income from business is 27 lakh uh, 75,000 rupees from that amount you have to be deducted uh, brought forward of business losses uh, unobserved depletion as per IT income tax there is uh, both the amount if you put together you're going to get 7 lakh 50,000 so subtract you're going to get income from business is 20 lakh 25,000 rupees so next one is competition so this is income from business so write that one uh, income from business uh, working note one in the format 20 lakh 25,000 rupees next one is income from long term capital gain not liable for HTT is nothing they given information write it as nil income from other sources not given in the problem write it as nil other time, gross total income is 20 lakh 25,000 rupees deduction under section 80g to 80jj is given no nothing they given any known deduction is given other taxable income is 20 lakh 25,000 rupees next one is add long term capital gain 20% nothing they given but long term capital gain liable for STD is given in the problem how much is it given in the problem the, because it is a STD because adjustment is given listed shares so 3 lakh so 3 lakh minus uh, 1 lakh it is a exempted so exempted under section 10 subsection 38 so subtract the amount you are going to get 2 lakh rupees amount as a that amount next one is a short term capital gain liable for STD nothing they given casual income not given so uh, if you add 2 lakh rupees you are going to get total taxable income as per IT is 22 uh, lakh 25,000 rupees so let's calculate the tax liability as per normal provision first we have to calculate the tax liability for the long term capital gain liable for STD because it is a uh, slab rate is very different this 4 is slab rate is 25% so that's why we have to calculate first 2 lakh rupees so 2 lakh into 10% uh, you're going to get 20,000 rupees other taxable income how much is the total taxable income 22 lakh 25,000 rupees so we are we already calculated 2 lakh subtract that amount you're going to get 20 lakh 25,000 rupees into 25% you're going to get 5 lakh 6,250 so add both of the amount you're going to get 5 lakh 26,250 in this amount you have to add health and education says 4% you're going to get 20, 1, 21,050 rupees so total tax liability as per normal provision is 5 lakh 47,300 rupees okay so this is step number one Let's see the step number two that is competition of tax liable uh, book profit or mat provision uh, net profit as per profit and loss account is how much is given on uh, 21 lakh 95 thousand rupees and uh, add in visible uh, add inclusions to the book profit which only will come under book profit provision for income tax proposed dividend provision for contingent liability and depreciation four items it will going to become so add all these items you're going to get uh, total as 5 lakh uh, 45 uh, 45 lakh 75 thousand rupees under that you have to be exclude the book profit one is depreciation we have to add one and we are same amount we have to be excluded that is 15 lakh and brought forward of business losses and observed depreciation as per IT we have to take 4 lakh 50 and 5 nil so always if it is anything nil if it is given any of the both the any of the amount you have to write it as whichever is less means nil amount only so 15 lakh subtracted you will going to get 30 lakh 75 thousand rupees and compute tax liability so as per mat provision what is the minimum tax 18.5 percent so 30 lakh 75 thousand into 18.5 5 percent uh, if you calculate this amount you will going to get and for that amount you have to calculate health and education which is four percent and total tax liability as per book profit is five lakh ninety one thousand six thirty okay step number three let's see step number three is a tax liability tax step number one step number two whichever is a high is a tax liability of the company so this is a um, it provision this is a book profit whichever is i means book profit is getting high so this is an amount which going to be uh, payable to the tax payable to the government okay tax payment payable to payable to government okay so this is the amount will going to be paid to the government of india so next one is this step number four is this is the last step competition of tax rate tax rate when it will come step number two is greater than step one so step number two is now it is a greater so that's why tax rate will going to become so subtract uh, amount how much of excess amount is paying uh, compared to an it 44330 this amount you can be carry forward to consecutively 10 assessment year so this is how we can solve the uh, problem solution for problem number one nine so if any uh, doubts any queries you can uh, free to us thank you have a nice day Good morning students we will going to be see next problem that is problem number 10 under assessment of company let's see the problem uh, Gumson Limited is engaged in the manufacturing and exporting of leather business. So they are engaged in the leather uh, exporting of leather shoes. Following is a profit and loss account has given in the for the assessment year 2019-20. So which I have to be identified which one is a business and non-business expenses. So raw material consumer is obviously it is a business. Wages and salaries is a business. Administration expenses is a business. 
depreciation is given we have to be see whether it is given in the adjustment also so if it is given in the adjustment we have to be add back this amount and the adjustment amount you have to deduct it if it is given only in the penal account we have to ignore if it is given only in the adjustment we have to deduct it so depreciation is given in the penal account as well as the adjustment also so both the amount this amount will go to add back and this amount will going to be deducted as a admissible expenses next one the other indirect expenses the other indirect expenses is nothing but it is a gst okay gst is also related to your business so obviously it is a business expenses provision for contingent liability on non non business expenses add back proposed dividend is a non business expenses add back net profit is given come to adjustment so this one is over this one second adjustment is payment against bill of 50000 was made in uh, made to supplier in cash i already explained any kind of payment if you are made to an outsider more than 10000 rupees so entire amount is considered as an inadvisable expenses so they are making more than 10000 rupees so 50000 is considered as an entire amount as an inadvisable so add back this one is indirect expenses what is about the indirect expenses is given it is a business expenses only that is 5 lakh rupees out of that indirect expenses that has been included customs duty penalty i already explained any kind of payment if it is made after the due date is considered as an inadvisable expenses if you are making any kind of payment after in the, uh, after due date obviously they will going to be income tax they will going to be imposed the penalty so penalty on customs obviously it is considered as a non non business expenses this 12000 will going to be add back because it is already included under indirect tax so that's why next one is convertible foreign exchange brought into india 34 lakh 50000 obviously it is a business expense because they are engaged in the export of business, exporting of uh, shoes of leather shoes obviously most of the transaction will going to be taken place in foreign currency so it is a considered as a business expenses only next one is brought for out of business losses unobserved depreciation as per book as per it is given as per books will come under step number 2 whichever is less and um, uh, as per it will come under step number 1 both the amount we have to be subtracted come to the credit side of the penal account uh, sales tax uh, uh, local and export is given both are considered as a business income ignore it and excess duty drawback is also considered as a business income ignore it cash subsidy is nothing but some of the uh, some kind sometimes uh, the, uh, the government of india will going to be give the subsidies for uh, the business sectors who are engaged in the exports in order to promote our exports reason also we know why we have to promote means we have to be um, uh, that means uh, foreign exchange currency we have to will going to be come back and uh, obviously country will going to be uh, grow if uh, export is greater than import so that's why we will going to be uh, government of india sometimes they will going to be give the cash subsidies for exporting of business so this one also considered as a business income so this is the problem we will going to so we have to calculate uh, uh, total tax liability as per normal provision of it and tax liability and mat provision and tax liability uh, that is whichever is less uh, whichever is high step number 1 step number 2 if any tax rate if it is arises we have to calculate okay so this is pro problem uh, i will not going to be solve this problem guys okay you have to be calculate uh, uh, it is a homework for you people so let's calculate this problem if you have any queries any doubts you can uh, free to ask okay but please uh, try to solve this problems because it is a very important problems for your exam point of view thank you have a nice day hello viewers hello everyone namaskar so let's continue the problem under this sessions that is problem number 11 under assessment of company we will going to be solve the competition of taxable income under uh, normal provision book provision tax liability and tax credit so before let into the grow into the problem so let's start with uh, today's session with a good quotation no one plans to fail but someone fails to plan so plan your work work your plan expect a miracle in your life <coughs> so all the best to everyone so let's start with sessions <clears throat> the following is a profit and loss account of dhamaka limited for the year ending, uh, ending 31st march 2019 is given <clears throat> so material consumed is always the business always on uh, debit side they will going to be give the business expenses so we have to be identify which one is a business expense which one is a non business expense always credit side they will going to be give which uh, business income so always we have to be identify which one is a business income which one is a non business income okay so material is a business expense uh, direct wages is a business expense salary is a business expense other expenses a business expense depreciation they given in the pnl account let's see the adjustment any kind of adjustment is given related to in depreciation as yes, they given in the adjustment also so whatever the pay, uh, depreciation is given in the pnl account add back and adjustment amount deduct as a business or admissible expenses director's remuneration is a business uh, audit fees is a business provision for income tax is a non business because it is a considered as a uh, uh, future event that is a uh, meant for an uh, reserves is meant for the future purpose not for the present so that's why any kind of provisions so pnl account will going to be prepared at the end of the year only not for the future point of view so that's why it is considered as a non business expenses had back 
Loss of subsidiary company is also considered as a non-business expenses. Why? Because here loss is incurred for the not this company, Mr. Damaka company. It is a subsidiary of some other company. So that's why it is not related to uh, this business. So that's why we have to be add back as a non-business expenses. Customs penalty. So penalty is also considered as a non-business expenses. Why? Uh, why? Because I already explained any kind of payment are made after the due date. It is considered as an inadmissible expenses. So the, in, if it is made before due date, it is considered as a business expense. So only penalty when they will going to be imposed by the government if you are paying after the due date only, right? So that's why it is considered as a we will going to be assume it, this customs duty has paid after the due date. So what is the Due, uh, uh, due date for uh, payment of customs duty or any company to pay the due date for customs duty uh, that is uh, tax rate is due date is 30, 30th September okay in case of an individual like uh, paying of commission bonus or any kind of uh, uh, come uh, like any kind of salaries due date is uh, the is uh, uh, 31st July for the individual is a 31st July for the company point of view if anything uh, they are paying tax is 31st 30th September so penalty uh, is considered as a non-business expenses add back proposed dividend so here proposed dividend uh, here it is not considered as an expenses because here they are paying dividend in uh, apportionment of uh, uh, appropriation of profit so that's why uh, so it is not considered as an expenses it is a return to the shareholders so that's why it is an expenses uh, non-business expenses so add back so let's come to the adjustment uh, so the depression deducted contingent uh, contingency reserves was created during the year so whatever the reserves which has been crea uh, created under credit side given so amount withdrawn for contingency reserves i already explained so this contingency is reserves obviously it is not meant for uh, uh, the present event so that's why it is a future event we will going to consider as a non-business income at the same time in step number two i already explained any kind of transfer of general reserves if it is given under it will come under step number one withdrawal of general reserves if it is given it will come under the deduction so here withdrawal if it is there they given on the credit side so that's why we're going to be deducted under the book profit also next one is uh, uh, very very important profit and sale of plant and machinery is also considered as a non-business income at the same time whether it will going to be considered as a short-term capital gain or long-term capital gain because they're selling a plant and machinery always keep in mind so always all kind of depreciable assets is considered as a short-term capital assets only i think we are your uh, sir sampal sir somia ma'am has already explained uh regarding this uh keep in mind one point in your mind all kind of depreciable assets always considered as in short term or long term only so not long term even though it is a long term we're going to be assume that it is a short term capital assets only so here the plant and machinery is a depreciable assets only right so that's why it is considered as a short term capital gain only so we're going to be right under short term capital gain okay it is they're not given whether it is a stt or not stt assume that it is not liable for stt okay so they will if they if it is a stt they will going to be give clearly okay so this is a uh, explanation for the problem let's see the solution for uh, problem number 11 okay so this is a format before starting into the problem we have to be uh, write down the the format under competition of uh, taxable income as per normal provision of it there are four steps will go uh, four rates of income will be there income from house property business and profession short term capital again not liable for stt income from other sources you're going to get aggregate of all these four rates you're going to be considered as in other gross total income and deduction under section 80 g to 80 jj if it is there will going to be deducted and other total gross other uh, uh, total taxable income is there and had long term capital gain 20% uh, because this is a slab rate is different so that's why we will go to the right separately long term capital gain liable for STT only if it is calculated or calculated only if it is excess of 1 lakh if it is less than 1 lakh it is exempted under under section 10 subsection 38 and next one is short term capital gain liable for STT and casual income is there so if you aggregate all this if you add you are going to get total taxable income as per normal provision of IT so let's start the sessions um, Let's try, uh, so solve the problem. Income from house property is anything. Income from house property credit side is given information. Nothing they given. So rated as nil. Next one, income from business and profession. Let's see the working note, uh, working note number one. Competition of taxable income under business. So net profit as per profit and loss account. How much is the net profit? 53,000. So record it 53,000 rupees. Add non-business income, uh, non-business expenses are in advisable expenses debited in PNL account. Which are all non-business expenses debited in PNL account? Depreciation because it is given both is the side provision for income tax loss of subsidiary company 
custom duty penalty propose dividend so if you had all these items you're going to get uh, 8 lakh 27 thousand rupees so for, for this this amount if you add profit you're going to get 8 lakh 80 thousand rupees next one is allowable or admissible expenses only one item it is given that is depreciation so depreciation amount you have to deduct it that is 2 lakh 50 thousand so subtract it you're going to get uh, uh, 6 lakh 30 thousand rupees next one non-business income non-business income two item is given one is withdrawal of uh, uh, contingency reserves because it is not related to your uh, uh, business it is reserves is meant for in future it is a income it is recorded under the income side is nothing but they will going to be considered as a non-business income only because it is not considered as a business income and profit and sale of uh, uh, plant and machinery for business of business always keep in mind uh, profit and sale of plant and machinery for business it is not considered as a business income it is considered as a capital gain is either it is a come under the uh, capital gain account not under the uh, business uh, when you are competing in business income so that's why it is considered as a non-business income so deduct it so both the item if you deduct it you're going to get uh, two lakh rupees so final amount is uh, four lakh thirty thousand rupees for such amount you have to there will be having the given brought forward of business losses and observed depression as per it as per book profit so always as per it will come under step number one both the amount we have to subtract and as per book profit whichever is less will come under step number two so as per book for it we can take both the amount three lakh thirty thousand rupees subtract it finally taxable income from business is one lakh rupees so record that amount under the format that is uh, income from business uh, working note one that is one lakh rupees next one is a uh, short term capital gain i already explained any kind of plant and machinery depreciable always depreciable all assets always considered as in uh, short term capital assets only so here they are selling a profit on sale they are making a profit on sale of uh, uh, plant and machinery for business so here their gain they are uh, incurring so they are not specified whether it is an stt or not assume that it is other than stt so record that one here income from a short term capital gain li not liable for stt 50,000 rupees okay understood right next one is income from other sources no other in income from other sources is not provided in the problem write it as nil income from uh, gross total income is 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees that is 1 lakh and plus 50 thousand 1 lakh 50 and no deduction is provided in the problem write it as nil other taxable income is a 1 lakh 50 thousand so no such kind of uh, uh, income is not given in the problem long term capital again long term capital again li not liable for liable for stt short term capital again liable for stt casual income all, all are considered as a nil only no nothing no information is provided in the problem so total taxable income as per it is 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees and this amount will go we have to calculate the tax liability uh, so let's calculate the tax liability under uh, normal provision of it so what is a corporate tax for uh, corporate tax for normal uh, normal uh, provision of it 25 percent so 1 lakh 50 thousand into 25 percent 37,500 and this amount we have to calculate health and education says 4 percent uh, 37,500 into 4 percent 1500 so if you add both of the amount you're going to get total tax liability as per normal provision is uh, 39,000 rupees okay next one is step number two is competition of book profit and mat provision so net profit as per profit and loss account how much is 53,000 rupees let's add how much uh, what and all uh, uh, provision for contingent uh, book profit items will going to come depreciation the same item uh, same amount we have to be addable and same amount we have to subtractable provision for income tax so loss of subsidiary company and proposed dividend so add all these items you're going to get uh, uh, seven lakh sixty five thousand rupees and subtract depreciation we have to subtract both the only p and account amount whatever the depreciation has been specified such amount we have to addable and same item uh, same amount you have to be subtractable keep in mind if any kind of revaluation of uh, uh depreciable assets if it is given we have to exclude uh, the, uh, from this amount okay so in this problem nothing they given next one is uh, uh, i already scrolled any kind of transfer of general reserves if it is given we have to addable and withdrawal of general reserves if it is given we have to be subtractable so withdrawal of general reserves is given so subtract it and the brought forward of business losses and absorbed depreciation as per book is uh, we have to take under step number two so whichever is less so whichever is less means two lakh fifty uh, two lakh and fifty thousand means uh, less is fifty thousand only so add all this item like uh, 75,000 so subtract this amount from this amount 8 lakh 18,000 minus uh, 3 lakh 75,000 so totally total taxable income as per book profit is 4 lakh 43,000 rupees so uh, this is a taxable income as per the book profit let's calculate the tax liability under mat provision so what is a corporate tax we have uh, what is a corporate tax under minimum alternative tax is 18.5 percent so taxable income is 4 lakh 43 thousand into 18.5 percent means you're going to get 81,955 and this amount we have to pay health and education is 4 percent that is 3,278 total uh, if you add it you're going to get 85,200 
233. So step number three is the computation of tax liability. Step number one and step number two, the tax liability which one will get the highest, that one will going to be payable to the government. Here step number two is getting the highest one. Okay. Next one step number four is the computation of tax liability. Tax liability will going to be arises only when the step number two is greater than step one. So in this problem, the step number is one two is greater, that is book profit is highest. So that's why we have to subtract eighty five thousand two hundred and thirty three minus tax liability as per IT is thirty nine thousand rupees. How much is the tax credit we are getting? Forty six thousand two hundred and thirty three. This amount you can be claimable, or you can take credit uh, consecutively for a ten assessment year in the future. Okay. So this is a solution for the problem. So if you have any queries or any doubts, you can free to us. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Students, okay, um, we will going to be continuing the problem under uh, assessment of company, problem number 12. So, this problem is very, very important because they ask for uh, deduction under section 80 IB. So, I will going to be explain what do you mean by an 80 IB. In the problem for 14 marks, uh, deduction majority times they will going to ask 80 G. Or is if ATG if it is not provided, they will going to be asked ATIB. So always they will going to be give these sessions, guys. So no need to uh, worry about it. Okay. Uh, so in this problem, they given uh, ATIB, and uh, one more uh, direction is given that is ATG. Uh, 54d what do you mean by 54d will going to be section 54 deduction under section 54 will going to be says about capital gain so if you remember income tax to deduction under section 54d will going to be explained what do you mean by 54d in few minutes uh, later i will only explain okay so let's see the solution for problem uh so dika uh, limited a public uh, company set up industrial unit for the manufacturing of chemicals as notified backward area a, a, which was established in 2007 and 8 so this date is very very important okay why it is important i will going to explain now so by fulfill the condition under section 80 ib so what this 80 ib will going to be says about is nothing but any kind of profit or gain if it is earned by the industrial unit if it is a engaged in other industrial other than infrastructural development what is this other than infrastructural development is nothing but if any kind of business if it is engaged in like uh, exploring of an oil development of an housing project or any kind of uh, uh, hospitals which is engaged in rural area or any kind of uh, building or construction of a storage purpose storage of a vegetables or processing or any kind of uh, uh, distribution of power all are come under the uh, uh, ATIB. Okay, so this ATIB will going to be says that if such kind of business, if it is established or if it is engaged in that such kind of business, such kind of industries they can claim deduction hundred percent up to ten assessment years. Ten assessment year is nothing but from the date of establishment of a business, they can claim the deduction up to ten assessment year. And which year it is established uh, business? Two thousand seven and eight. From two thousand seven and eight to uh, eight to ten assessment years consecutively ten assessment year they can claim the deduction. Let's see whether this deduction applicable for this uh, problem or not. Okay, because we are in the assessment year of two thousand uh, nineteen twenty previous year two thousand eighteen nineteen. We have to be see. Now only I will explain. So if you calculate when it is a business was established to 2007 and 8. If you come to the 10 assessment years, you will end up with 2016-17. Okay. But we are in 2019 assessment, 1920-20 uh, assessment year. But the deduction will going to be end up 2016-17 uh, only. So then this deduction will not going to be applicable because the 10 assessment year has already expired. So this is a explanation for 80 uh, under section 80 IB. Okay, understood, right? So let's continue the problem. The PNL account is given, so we have to be identify which one is a uh, which one is a business expense, which one is a non-business expense, which one is a business income, which one is a non-business income. If it is a business expense, ignore it. If it is a non-business expense, we have to be add back to the profit because it is not related to your business income. Again, we if it is a business income, ignore it. If it is a non-business income, we have to be a, direct under uh, taxable income under business income okay depression given let's see the adjustment uh, problem so material consumed is given it is a, obviously it is a business expense excess duty payable it is also business expense because excess duty will going to be payable at the time of manufacturing of a product direct wages is also considered as a business expense our salary is also considered as a business expense depression is given under pnl account as well as the adjustment so pnl account amount should be addable adjustment should amount should be deductible as allowable expenses next one is the income tax provision for income tax i already explained any kind of provision is meant for the future purpose 
not for the present purpose so that's why provision for it is considered as a non business expenses so deduct as a non business addable to the non business expenses and other expenses considered as a business expense provision for loss of subsidiary company here the loss is incurred due to some other subsidiary company not related to this business uh, this company so that's why provision for loss of subsidiary company is considered as a non business expenses so add back to the net profit dividend or interim dividend is paid so this one is also considered as a non business expenses why because it is paid out of appropriation of profit see is not it is an income to the shareholders it is not considered as an expenses so, so that's, that's why it is considered as a non business expenses add back to the net profit and come to the adjustment depreciation is given to deduct as a allowable expenses and brought forward of business losses unobserved depreciation is given as per books and as per it so as per books will come under step number 2 as per book for tax will come under step number Uh, step number one, both the amount will come under step number one. Uh, but in case of step number two, only which one is less will going to be come under step number two. And contingency reserves was created out of profit and loss account. So I already explained step number two. Uh, contingent any kind of transfer of reserves if it is come under uh, debit side if it is come given it is come under step number one uh, as to be step number two should be addable. And again, if it is given under the credit side, if any kind of transfer of reserves, if it is provided, we have to be deductible under book profit. So here in this problem, they given credit side, we have to be excluded. Okay, this is a this is a problem. This is our explanation for this one. And company is entitled to claim deduction under section 80IB. So the company is engaged in other than infrastructure or development. So any kind of business, if it is established and fulfill the condition, they can claim deduction up to 10 assessment year from the date of establishment of a business. But in this business, they are not eligible because they are expired 10 assessment. Year it will come to end to end up up to 2016-17 only 2016-17. So be a, because we are in 2019-20, so it is deduction will not going to be applicable because deduction has been expired. This one is very very important. Long term capital gain on sale of uh, sale of this explanation I will going to be later I will explain. So come to the adjustment. So. transfer of uh, reserves it is a non business income step number 1 as deduct as a non business income long term capital gain deduct as a non business income because it is a other rates of income but it will also come under uh, uh, sub, uh, step number 1 and the main format that is long term capital gain under that aid it will come but it is exempted from tax because of adjustment they are telling that long term capital gain on sale of uh, with respect to an industrial land acquired by state government and the company has received compensation during the previous year and such company will that company will acquire the land a new industrial land on 12 lakh rupees what this session will going to be explained is nothing but we know that under section 54d 54d will going to be explained that any kind of land any kind of uh, land and building if it is acquired by the government okay when the acquired by the government government normally they will going to be provide compensation to some uh, the individual if that individual if they utilize that fund to purchase any kind of land and building for new industrial undertaking they can claim 100% deduction full amount deduction under section 54d i will not going to be explain under 54 there will be having number of deduction under section capital gain uh, we already learn under income tax to the like 54 54 b 54 uh, uh, d 54 ec 54 g 54 f 54 ga 54 uh, uh, g uh, gb like this number of deduction will be there i will not going to be touch up only i will going to be focus i because already your income tax faculty has already done that topic so let's discuss 54d once again i will going to be tell 54d will going to be explain that any kind of uh a land and building acquired by the government if the government has provide compensation to that individual if the individual is spent that uh, income on purchasing of land and building full amount they can claim under the deduction he is purchasing new plant and machinery so that's why this 90000 under the 8 it full, uh, fully uh, exempted from tax so this is a explanation for the problem okay uh, um, so we will going to be see how to solve the problem under uh, assessment of company in the next uh, uh, session okay so have a nice day bye 